What is up guys, it's your boy Swalam here, back with another Classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now, Phase 3 has been announced and we will actually have a release date as well. It's coming out in a little bit over a week. It's coming out on April 4th, so that's about 10 days or 9 days from now. It's basically come as a shock. I think a lot of people wasn't expecting a 10 day between the announcement and the release, and this has shocked the market as well. Based on that, I want to make a follow-up video on some investments that are worth doing, and some investments you can take a look at now and also keep an eye out on the price for for phase 3. If you don't know, investment is how I have made most of my gold and so far I'm sitting on almost 10k gold in, in this phase. If I go to TSM, we can go to my ledger for example, 9.4k in investments. So investment is how I personally make most of my gold in the game, always has been and it's such a good way to make gold. The good thing about Classic WoW is that we usually know what's going to be in demand the next phase. Now the beautiful thing about Season of Discovery is that we don't know everything until it gets data mined. So there could be some brand new way lead supplies, there's going to be some brand new recipes in professions. It's like there's always a element of surprise, but for the most part we do know some items that will either be an increased demand next phase, or that has like no demand right now but definitely has a demand in the next phase. Now based on that we have a couple of items to take a look at today, and it's items that I'm personally investing into, and just items I'm being on the lookout for. If you want to have early access to videos like this including gold farms, investments and gold making strategies then check out my gold making guide through the link down below in the pinned comment or the top of the video description and check it out. It's a 157 long pages document for gold making covering the best gold farms, the best crafts to make profit with in season of discovery and just everything that I'm doing to make gold. It even covers my auction house strategies and just everything in the aspect of gold making is in one place. On top of that you do get early access to videos like this one and any other video that I have for gold making, you get them before they're public. So check it out, once again the link is down below if you do check it out, thank you so much. Now let's talk about investments. Now, first on the list, we have a couple of uh, fail-safe items. It's basically items I can't see not going up in price. They probably won't do anything more than double in price, but it's still a very good way to maybe double your gold or just make like 30, 40, 50% profits on these items as well. Item number one in that category is going to be the stone scale eel. Now, this one you can also turn into stone scale oil, and that is why you want to have it in the first place. So turning the eel into the oils, also like makes them um, it's like one eel into one oil 250 alchemy so you can't actually make them into oil until the next phase but the the eels themselves you can fish right now and a lot of people do get them right now now the oils are a reagent for all the best flasks i mean flask of petrification elixir of superior defense flask of the titans and the greater stone shield potions now Blizzard has already clarified in their preview post for phase 3 or the preview video that professions will go all the way to 300 skill in the next phase. So any craft in up to 300 and including 300 will be available which means Flask of Petrifications will be available and even Flask of the Titans. The problem here would be getting access to Black Lotus and even getting inside the instance to make flasks as well. That being said, this is like what is currently being used for which already makes it so that it has basically no demand right now and then increased demand the next phase. On top of that, it could be either the oils themselves or even elixirs of superior defense. Something using these oils could be used in whale supplies. Blizzard has also hinted towards brand new profession recipes both in phase 3 and in phase 4 which could also require these items. So first of all, it's guaranteed to go up in demand the next, next phase, based on the crafts we already have available, and then you have the speculative element of maybe being used in a whale aid supply, or other professional crafts that we don't know about just yet. This one is a very good investment if you ask me, it has basically guaranteed profits, and then it could even spike up even more as well, depending on exactly what happens. Following the same category, we have Black Mouth Oil. This one is just because you can use it to make a couple of things here. We have elixirs of water breathing, water walking, enchant gloves fishing, but mostly free action potions. So they will just go up in price with inflation. It's an item to battle inflation. It's an item that is in demand right now. It will be in demand in phase 3, phase 4, phase 7, every single phase, 
reaction potions will be in demand, and it's just an item to battle inflation. So if you're looking for something kinda safe to put your gold into, to just make sure your gold value goes up with inflation, this is a good item to put that into. You can also go for strangle kelp, but that one is a little bit more speculative, but black mouth oil, there we go, that's a good one. And you can also, you, you have the access to uh, this one right here, you have to have two oily black mouth and turn them into one oil so if you buy the fish the oily black mouth turn them into the oil that way when you're storing them in the bags they take up half the bag space because two fish equals one oil and they both stack up to 20. same thing goes for fire oil this is an item i'm personally investing a lot into and here you can see again you have two farfin snappers turning into one oil so to save bag space turn the farfin snappers into oil so either check the price of the oil right now or the fish on your server, the farfin snappers, turn them into oil, and these are used for a couple of crafts. The main one that I'm buying it for is the fire protection potion and also elixir of greater firepower. The elixir of greater firepower requires three fire oil and three fire bloom, so the fire oils will be in even more demand the next phase, as long as classes like, for example, um, for example, farm mages and warlocks, they will use them all the time, and they will keep being in demand for that reason. The elixir of greater firepower also requires 250 alchemy to make, so it will be available next phase. On top of that, you have um, you have the guaranteed profitability there from it being increased in demand, and still staying in demand as well. You, you for example, have the elixir of greater firepower and even the regular fire oils. Both of them are being used in whaled supplies, all already from phase 2. Plus it could be used in a phase 3 whaled supplies, like imagine if elixir of greater firepower is also a whaled supply in phase 3, that will just skyrocket profits here way more, but even if that doesn't happen, the firepower elixir, the greater one, by itself should make this one very profitable. So fire oils, really good item, and I'm personally investing quite a bit into this one. We also have Blindweed. This is something you can pick up right now, it requires I think it's 235 Herbalism, which you can get to by having the right item with the right enchant, and on the Horde side you can have even more than that by being Torrent for example, so you can pick this one up uh, right now, plus you can even buy it at the, um, the Darkmoon Fair. Now this is a reagent for Arcane Elixirs with 235 Alchemy Skill requirement, Elixir of Greater Intellect, Gift of Arthas, Limited Invulnerability Potions, and superior mana potions. Now for lips you need two blindweed to make one lip, and for arcane elixir you need one to make one. So these will be in pretty high demand, the only thing is right now they're about 30 silver each on my auction house, so they've already gone up a little bit in price, but I think they're still worth buying. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. We also have large radiant shards. I've talked about this one before, it's an item you can get right now, and it's used in basically all the skill requirements here for enchanting. If I just put this one a little bit more to the side, you can see exactly, there we go. You can't use it right now but lots of people are getting them right now. So right now the demand is basically zero, and demand goes up quite a bit next phase. So large radiant shards, you can get them right now, you can't really use them for anything, and all the enchants where you can use them becomes available in the next phase. To me this one is pretty safe, and it's something I put a little bit of gold into myself as well. Solid stones. I haven't mentioned this before, but it's a really, really, really good item, and it's a really good investment for a couple of reasons, mainly the fact that it's used in solid blasting powder. Now as you can see you need two solid stones to make one solid blasting powder. Now why would you want to have solid blasting powder? Well if you played Classic WoW before you probably know, but it's used in making goblin sappers. If I can go to reagent 4, you can go down here and they're used in goblin sapper charge. That's not the only thing they're required in, you can also use them for goblin mortar mortars, goblin bomb dispensers. They're used in all of these crafts as you can see on the screen, even the high mithril slugs and the uh, radiation bombs and stuff like that. But the most important one is the goblin sapper charge. This one will be used in raids, pvp, pve, it will be used absolutely everywhere. And we're getting access to these next phase, it's like, it's part of the engineering for gnomish and no, goblin engineers with 205 skill requirement. So if we had these in phase 2 it would be absolutely ridiculous but we're getting access to them in the next phase and as you can see you need 3 
solid blasting powders to make them. You also need unstable trigger. And guess what you also need to make unstable trigger? That's right, you need the same thing. You need, um, if I can go down here, created by, you need another solid blasting powder. So you basically need 8 solid stones, give or take, I think it's about 8 solid stones, to make 1 sapper charge. Now there is one more item on this list that I would keep an eye out for, and that is the raw knife fin snapper. This is something people are able to fish up right now, and once again, you can't really use it for anything. It's a reagent in, in required in making the knife fin soup, and knife fin soup requires 250 skill in cooking to make. Now knife fin soup might be the go-to food for both healers and casters next phase, especially casters that struggle with mana. It's the best mana soup to have, I think, in the next phase. It's at least up there, and you get 8 mana per 5 seconds back for 10 minutes, and that just requires one raw nightfin snapper, and also refreshing spring water. These can be fished once again right now, and you can snag them on the ocean house for somewhat cheap. You can even go to a website like what I would usually do here is go to JP Worgen, and check out the price of this on your server compared to other servers out there. You can even go to, a, to like, for example, if I just pull this up, make it a little bit, little bit bigger on the screen, you can compare it to all the other servers on the right side. So here you can see Living Flame EU Horde is 0 0.28, on mine it's 0 0.7. So for me I would not buy this one, somebody has tried to flip this as you can see, but you can even go for something like the median buy price that lasts either 5 minutes, 1 hour, or last 7 days. You can also go to, for example, the Classic Era servers to take a look at what they're selling for on the Classic Era servers. So you can go to something like Farm or for example in this case, Fire Mode Classic, the selling for median buyout is 70 gold for one raw night fin snapper. Now the market over there is like way out of the like the market over there is disgusting and it's weird, but it just kind of shows you that this is a valuable item if people are willing to pay that price. Now I don't think that's the price by the way, the average buyout, the lowest buyout is supposed to be 4, but the median buyout is 70. So just keep that in mind, but it's a good website to use to kind of get an idea of where the average price is, and you can take a look at other servers than just your own. So using the median buyout on the server comparison on the right side, you can see Living Flame EU Horde is 0 0.3, while Lava Lash EU Horde is 0 0.68, more than double the price. So those are the investments that I wanted to cover in this video. At the end, I just want to say, don't just go to the auction house right now and buy them. Use JP Worgen, like I just said. Alternatively, download TSM and get like a market value percentage that will show you the percentage average. So for me, we have the percentage of the market value on the right side. I think it's a TSM plugin. So you just have to have that on TSM. And as you can see, for me, it's red and 334%. If you buy solid stones for 13 silver each, the chances are you might not even make any profit at all, because going back two days they were 3 silver each, and now they're 13 because phase 3 has been announced, and someone is trying to flip this and sell it for crazy prices from people basically going crazy and buying the items that they need to have in advance. So wait for the prices to go back down on your server and find out what the usual price is. Once again, you can use a site like JP Worgen and zoom in. So going back to JP Worgen, we can go back, you can, I can put this over here, and you can take a look at the last prices on the chart. And then you can see what things you used to be selling for. Going to solid stones, for example, let's just take a look at solid stone. On my server, so we can take a look at solid stone right here. And we're gonna go over to Living Flame EU on the Alliance side. So living the, the these ones are selling for between 30, no, 3 and 4. Between 3 and 4 silver each is the average buy buy price for these. So for the liver for the less solid stones, just try to get them between 30 3 to 4 silver. Why do I keep saying 30 to 40? It's just so weird to me something selling for 3 and 4 silver, but get them for 3 to 4 silver and you should be fine on the most servers, but it's very server dependent, so using something like TSM and then getting an idea of what the actual price is, it's really good. 
just don't buy them when they're overpriced, okay? Now, that's the video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below. If you have any other investments you want to share, leave them in the comments as well. And once again, check out my gold making guide for early access to all of my gold, gold farms and the investment videos, basically anything gold making, will be shared over there first. That also includes phase 4 investments when that time comes, and even phase 3 farms. I'm gonna make a couple of videos on phase 3 farms before phase 3 comes out, so you know what to farm either while leveling or the second you get to level 50. So if you want to have that before it goes public, once again, the gold making guide is the place to be. And thank you so much if you do check it out. That's the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Peace out.